In today's episode, we'll be covering one of the most important programming statements, the function. Now, you may not know it, but we've actually been talking about a few functions this entire series. Print statements, for loops, and even basic math operations are all examples of functions, which of course begs the question of what actually defines a function. Well, a function is a segment of code that can be easily run by calling the function name, and depending on the type of function, we'll do something in return. For example, the print statement we have been using this series allows us to print something to the console anytime we want by simply calling the print function and entering in what we want to be printed to the console. Behind the scenes, there is actually even more complex code that is in charge of taking your text and translating it to the console to be printed. The developers of almost all programming languages realize that you don't want to program something that manually has to print something to the console through the use of complex programming, and so they implemented the print statement to reduce the stress and the length of code on the user, abstracting it down to a simple line of code. This is actually the main theme of all functions, and the backbone of any good program. Oftentimes, in your program, there are going to be sections of code which are repeated and serve the same purpose, or equations which you want to allow multiple inputs of. And so you can use functions in order to condense these down into singular lines of code to save both time and reduce clutter on your code. The print statement is just one example of functions in everyday code. There are thousands of functions that are available to you. Because you don't always use all of them in a single program, you're going to have to import these functions from packages found inside the IDE, which is something we're going to be covering in the next episode. Now there are four main types of functions in most programming languages, and they are separated by whether or not they take in arguments and whether or not they return values. Let's start by separating them by whether or not they take arguments, but first we have to cover what arguments are. Arguments are essentially variables that we pass into the function in order to be manipulated and then either returned back to us, printed to the console, or be used in another operation. Think of functions with arguments like ordering food at a restaurant. If you walked up to your local Five Guys and told them that you wanted to get food without supplying a type of food, they would probably look at you confused. You need to tell them exactly what you want to order so that they can make it and then give it to you. In this case, getting food is the function, and what you order is being passed in as the argument. You must note that the argument can be many different things. It could be fries, burgers, a soda, anything really on the menu, and such is the case with arguments in programming. This is essentially what happens with the computer. If you use a function, for example the max function, which takes in two integers and returns the maximum number between the two, and you don't input two numbers or variables for it to compare, it's going to throw you an error just like the Five Guys employee. He doesn't know what you want to eat, and the computer doesn't know what two numbers you want it to compare. Arguments are a way for programmers to have one function that can do something depending on whichever variables can be passed through. Thinking back to our Five Guys example, a restaurant that only allows one type of food to be made regardless of what you order isn't going to be very useful or diversified. But if we're able to pass in arguments and tell them what type of food that we want, our experience can be heightened and more options become available, which is exactly what happens when you accept arguments into your functions. An example of a function with arguments is the print statement. The function will print whatever is in its parentheses, and so whatever string or variable we pass in is the argument, which it then uses to figure out what to print to the console. Now functions can also be created and used without arguments and still be incredibly useful. For example, let's say you were making a text-based RPG game, and one of the options you give your player is the ability to view their stats at any time. Now every time you come upon an option and they choose the view stats button, you don't want to have to type out six different print statements for every statistic they may have. Instead, what you could do is you could package the six different print statements in a simple function called print stats. You don't need to pass in any arguments to this function because it can just read them from the variables you have set. This allows you to save a lot of time writing out code, but also a lot of space, which is extremely important when your programs begin getting in the hundreds and thousands of lines. Now that we've separated functions into those that take arguments and those that do not, let's again split these up into those that return values and those that do not. When you're making your own functions, which is something we will be covering in a later episode, you have to choose what your function will return, if anything at all. Functions are able to return values in the form of objects, whether they be string variables, integer variables, and you can even have functions that return arrays. What this means for programming is that you're actually able to set new string variables equal to a function that returns a string, because when the program asks to set the variable equal to that function, 
The function will then run and return a value to which the variable would then be set to. For example, let's say you had created a function which took in two string variables as arguments, combined them, and then returned them as a single string. This combined string function could then be used to set string variables, since what it is returning is technically a string. What the variable would be set to is actually whatever is returned from that function. The other type of function is one that does not return anything, and these are known as void functions. Oftentimes, these are like the print stats function we created earlier, simply used to condense large amounts of print statements that appear often in your code. These cannot be set to variables since they don't return anything and just run through. So there you have it. The four types of functions, ones that take in arguments and don't return anything, ones that take in arguments and return something, ones that don't take in arguments but still return values, and the ones that take in arguments and don't return anything. Each of these four types of functions are unique and useful in their own way, and you will probably find yourself using them all throughout your programming journey. So get used to the different types of functions and know how to make the most of them. Finally, I'd like to talk about one of the other major benefits of functions, which is that it makes it super useful to make large changes to your code without having to go through the entire program. Each function is just a copy of that function's code, and so it's very easy to make changes to the function and have it translate across your code. Let's go back to our text-based game example and say that you wanted to go back and add in a new stat that the player can level up. Without functions, you would have to go back into your code, find every instance that you had printed out the user's stats, and create another print statement to display the new statistic. However, with the print stats function, all you would need to do is find where you created the function and add in a print statement which displays the new statistic and you're done. Now every place which had called the print stats function previously will now also print the new statistic as well. You can see just how powerful functions can be if used properly. We haven't even scratched the surface yet, which is why we're going to cut it off here. In the next episode, we'll dive a little bit more into how we can use functions other people have made for us. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing to the left and check out the playlist to the right for the rest of the episodes in this series. Thanks for watching.